How does the COVID-19 virus cause infection? The COVID-19, otherwise known as the SARS-CoV-2 virus, has spike proteins which enables it to enter healthy human cells by attaching to another protein on the surface of the cells. This allows the virus's RNA to take over the human cell and make its own copies into hundreds and thousands of viruses that take over other healthy cells. The virus RNA can prevent human cells from sending defense signals that they're under attack while it continues to multiply. How does the body fight COVID-19 infection? Some people are able to overcome the virus by increasing body temperature and release of white blood cells to kill the cells that have become infected with the virus. But the problem is when you have a low cell count or low immunity due to other health problems and also if it manages to get into your lower respiratory tract causing pneumonia. What about those that cannot fight the infection? Now, it's for this reason, vaccines have been developed to help the body in fighting infection. Generally, vaccines take 10 to 15 years to be developed and involves growing a dead or weakened form of the virus in chicken egg cells. However, new technology now involves use of mRNA vaccines, which does not require the virus itself, but takes the genetic code from the virus. What vaccines are available and which should I choose? Currently, there are three types of vaccines approved in the UK by the Medical and Healthcare Regulatory Authority, otherwise known as the MHRA. The Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, which was approved 2nd of December 2020. The Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine, which was approved 30th of December 2020. And the Moderna vaccine, which was approved on the 9th of January 2021. However, you cannot select the vaccine you want as it depends on availability of the vaccines. It might be possible that in the future, should annual boosters be needed, then you might be able to choose. There are currently over 50 other COVID-19 vaccines currently going through development and trial phases before they can be approved by the regulatory body. How does the mRNA vaccine work? mRNA vaccines are new type of vaccines to protect against infectious diseases. Current vaccines put a weakened or inactivated DNA virus into our cells to trigger an immune response. mRNA vaccines work differently by using mRNA, which is a molecule that transports the virus's genetic instructions to the cells to teach them how to make proteins to trigger an immune response. Moderna and Pfizer are mRNA vaccines produced in a similar way. The mRNA is enclosed in a lipid biolayer made of nanoparticles. This lipid biolayer is what prevents the mRNA from being destroyed by our natural enzymes. The mRNA merges with the cells and is released into the cytoplasm, which then interacts with ribosomes and translated into spike proteins, which now protrude out of the cells and are recognized by our immune system to provoke a response such as T cells, which now call on other immune cells in our body. And this helps form antibodies that target the spike protein if attacked by the virus. Remember, spike proteins are what the COVID-19 virus uses to enter our cells. The cell then breaks down the mRNA from the vaccine and gets rid of them completely. Would any of the vaccines change my DNA? mRNA never enters the nucleus of the cell, which is where our DNA is kept. The cells break down and get rid of the mRNA soon after it has finished using the instruction. How effective are the vaccines? Pfizer and Moderna both report to be 94-95% to effective based on clinical trials which are still ongoing. Remember, no vaccine is 100% protective. So how did they arrive at these figures? Now, if you look at the clinical trials, Moderna had 30,000 participants with 11,000 from a non-white population, 7,000 were over the age of 65, and 5,000 were less than 65 with comorbidities such as diabetes, cancer, and HIV. 50% were given placebo, which means 50% were not given the vaccine, while 50% were given the actual vaccine. 95 people were positive for COVID and only 5 got a vaccine, while 90 were placebo. 11 severe cases were in the placebo group. These trials gave an efficacy of 94%. Pfizer had 42,000 participants, with 50% each having a placebo and the actual vaccine. 170 people were positive for COVID and only 8 got a vaccine, while 162 were placebo. These trials gave an efficacy of 95%. Note that the vaccines were not tested in people aged over 85. Can I catch COVID-19 from the vaccines? mRNA vaccines do not use the live virus that causes COVID-19. Instead, it's made from synthetic material, so you cannot catch COVID-19 from the vaccine. But it's likely you might have already caught the virus, which can take up to 14 days to show symptoms before taking the vaccine. Can I still catch COVID after the vaccination? Once vaccinated, it takes up to two weeks to develop immunity after the first dose of the vaccine, so you still need to take precautions, especially before the second dose three weeks later. Does any of the vaccines prevent transmission of the virus to others? 
There is no data yet as to whether taking both of the vaccines can prevent people from catching and passing the virus to someone else, but that the vaccines will reduce the risk of transmission, so you still need to take precautions. This means that you may still catch the virus, but be less ill as a result of the vaccination. How long will I remain protected for after the vaccination? Well, this is not currently known as the vaccines are relatively new. It's thought generally that you will lose antibodies after a few months. However, our bodies have both memory T cells and B cells, which can remain in the body for years, and it is hoped that they can mount a response if needed. Do I still need a vaccine if I've had COVID-19? New research from Public Health England shows that antibodies from a previous infection provide at least 83% protection from picking up the virus again and possibly up to 99% for at least 5 months and probably far longer. This varies from person to person, so for this reason, it's recommended that even if you've already had COVID, you should still get the vaccine, so this would be a personal choice. What are the side effects of the vaccines? Fever, muscle aches, headaches, soreness at the injection site, allergic reactions, which are common side effects with most vaccines. However, only a small number of people have been reported to have allergic reactions from the vaccine. Is the vaccine safe to use? Vaccines are only approved for use after being thoroughly tested on tens of thousands of people. In order to approve a vaccine, experts at the MHRA look carefully at all the data, the evidence about the vaccine, and make sure that it meets the strict standards of safety, quality, and effectiveness. So what's in the vaccine? Well, as you know, the active ingredient will be the mRNA, which encodes the spike protein. You've also got the lipid biolayers, which helps the virus to slip inside the cells. The vaccines also contain salts, which helps to keep the pH of the vaccine close to that of the cells, as well as a sugar called sucrose, which helps to protect the lipid biolayer and prevents them from clumping together. Pfizer vaccine does not contain any preservatives such as thimerosal that is found in the flu vaccine, and the company has also denied sneaking any microchips into the vaccine. So what about the AstraZeneca vaccine? While the Pfizer and Moderna uses mRNA, AstraZeneca uses a weakened virus that causes the common cold called adenovirus, which is obtained from chimpanzee, and so uses DNA. The virus is genetically modified, so the virus cannot replicate and cause an infection. This genetically modified DNA goes into the cytoplasm of the cell and into the nucleus. It does not go into the DNA of the cell, but is transcribed into the RNA, which exits the nucleus back into the cytoplasm, and similar to Moderna, is transcribed into spike proteins. AstraZeneca enrolled 90,000 people in Brazil, 3,000 in the UK. The USA trial was paused due to serious adverse events before being restarted. By error in the UK, half dose of the vaccine was given, then a full dose, while in Brazil, full dose was given all 28 days apart. Efficacy was 62% in the Brazil group and 90% in the UK group. This gives an average efficacy of about 70%, which is similar to that of the flu vaccine. So whether you take the vaccine is down to personal choice. If you're taking the vaccine to prevent from catching COVID, then there's no evidence yet that this is the case. However, if you're taking the vaccine to reduce the chances of catching COVID, as well as the severity of illness from COVID, then based on safety data, there's no reason not to take the vaccine. However, certain groups of people such as pregnant or breastfeeding women and people over the age of 85 have not been subject to clinical trials, though it is thought to be generally safe. So it will be a case-by-case -case basis with these groups and to all boil down to if you have underlying health conditions and if the benefits outweigh the risks as to if you really need to take the vaccine.